next presentation. Could I welcome Graham Nelson to the stage? So Graham, Graham's one of the co-owners of Northwest Physio Group in Mooney Ponds, Melbourne, and he studies RM training in 2011. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. This happens to follow on very well from Rick's talk, actually, so I can probably cut my talk by half. Uh, so my topic today is primary contributing factors for lateral epicondylalgia, a multi-clinic analysis. It's been reported in the literature that up to 15% of workers in repetitive manual tasks experience tennis elbow. And up to 30% of these can suffer from absenteeism for up to 12 weeks, which is a large cost to the community and to businesses. So the aims of my talk is to increase your awareness of new solutions for this common condition, to understand the limitations of the patho-anatomical model of care, to be open to a whole body assessment for an upper limb condition, and to gain insight into the neurophysiology of primary contributors for uh, tennis elbow, which Rick has alluded to quite well. Is there a more effective way to treat this condition? So we have looked at the research in this area and concluded this. There is very little evidence to support any single or combination of treatments for tennis elbow. And there's been numerous studies in this area. They've looked at taping, they've looked at ultrasound, corticosteroid injection, electronic, uh, electric shock wave, wave therapy, etc. So no conclusive evidence has been found to support any uh, modality. A more recent review uh, found some good evidence for mulligan uh, uh, mobilisations, and that was in the short and long term. But interestingly enough, the treatment group and the control group were no different at 12 months. So are we missing something here? Is the homogenous sample, the foundation of clinical research, is that really homogenous? Can we say a tennis player with tennis elbow has the same musculoskeletal makeup as an office worker with tennis elbow or a tradesperson? And in my opinion, I don't think so. So viewing it purely as a pathoanatomical uh, condition, I think has limitations. There was also evidence in the research uh, to support interventions on the cervical and thoracic spine. So why not consider other contributing factors? So looking for new solutions to this problem, we conducted a retrospective analysis of clients presenting with tennis elbow who underwent treatment via the Ridgeway method. Now, most of you will probably be able to tell me about the Ridgeway method now. I think you've uh, been exposed to it quite well this weekend. Uh, as you know, it's a systematic whole body assessment. One of the aims is to establish a cause for the condition, to find a primary contributing factor through a process of elim elimination and clinical reasoning. It uses objective measures that are relevant to the client and the condition. And you'll probably know by now also the PCF uh, is, a, is the structure that has the largest effect on the chosen movement and will change a number of other uh, asterisk signs throughout the body. And practitioners use a 45-point checklist to ensure consistency. So data was collected across uh, four clinics in three states, and thank you for those who volunteered to submit data. The inclusion criteria was pain in the area of, lateral, of the lateral elbow of any duration, pain on resisted wrist extension and or the grip test, which is consistent with all the criteria for randomised control studies. The primary outcome measure was the client's good result. And this, is, or this has been measured on a global improvement scale or a patient specific functional scale. It equated to about 90% rating on these scales and was also equivalent to a complete recovery or return to pre-injury function. Uh, Long-term data is still pending for this study, uh, and all the data was collected by RMCPs uh, in the six months prior to February 2015. So, what did we find? So we had 24 clients all up in this study. The average symptom duration was 26.6 weeks. The percentage that reached the good result was 62.5%. 
and the percentage that achieved um, uh, an 80 percent functional level, so not completely resolved but significantly better, was 87.5. Now how does this compare to the research in this area? Well some of the uh, randomised control studies report success rates of 65 percent in the physiotherapy group. What we've learned from this analysis is that um, this showed a higher proportion of responders to this approach than some of the clinical studies we, re we reviewed. The PCFs varied greatly. So there was PCFs in um, the upper body and uh, PCFs as well uh, in the lower body. So things like L1-2, infraspinatus, C4. So these were areas, these were the primary areas that caused um, most of the, the client's problems. So addressing these areas caused the, uh, created the biggest results. Now, the other thing to note here is that less than 10% of the PCFs were in the area of the elbow. So how can you explain this? I think Rick's actually explained it very well. So I won't rehash too much. Butler and Mosley, in their book Explaining Pain, refer to pain as a multiple system output activated by an individual specific neuromatrix. This neuromatrix is activated whenever the brain concludes that the body tissues are in danger and action is required. And so pain is allocated and anatomical reference in the virtual body. So the, the key points here is the individual specific neuromatrix. The anatomical reference area is dependent on the brain's subconscious determination of what is the best symptomatic protective response. Now if the neuromatrix processes all noxious inputs from the musculoskeletal system and the sum total of these exceed a safe threshold, then an output signal will be generated to prevent further tissue damage. So the outputs can be sensory, motor or neural and they're equivalent to protective responses in the body and then they also become noxious inputs via uh, the feedback loop. So the PCF is likely to be the primary protective response, creating the most noxious input for that particular condition. So targeting the PCF is likely to give you the best result. So let me explain this in a real life example. Very similar to Rick's. I think there's a, a thoracic spine element uh, going on here. Uh, let's say George is a middle-aged IT professional. Uh, he works long hours at a desk. He's an avid gardener as well, a bit of a weekend warrior. He has a thr thoracic kyphosis and a protracted shoulder posture and a bit of mild tendon, tendon pathology in his extensor tendon, which he's totally unaware of. His T4 segment experiences strain throughout the day because of his posture uh, and his long work hours. This builds up over time. Uh, he ex experiences some pain in the region but chooses to ignore it, doesn't really affect his day-to-day -day, um, lifestyle. Meanwhile, his central nervous system is um, detecting these signals and creating an output uh, signal or output signals to respond. So these might be uh, guarding in the upper traps or the pecs or the subscap, local hypermobility around T4, uh, adverse neural tension or sensory outputs to the scapula and the lateral elbow. So at this point in time, all this, uh, these inputs are at this level here, the subclinical level. Okay, so it, it's not really registering too much and it's not causing too many uh, problems for George. However, however, George has a busy, really busy week at work, finish, finish, finishing off a project, and then he goes crazy in the garden on the weekend to release stress. He does lots of clipping, weeding, uh, etc., and this all increases the strain on the T4 with the protracted posture. So he goes from the subclinical state to the point of overload. So at that point there is much more strain on the T4 and a stronger output signal is sent. Now his subconscious brain has chosen to send that signal now to his elbow because he knows, uh, because the brain knows that that's going to affect his um, behaviour much more than uh, pain in the area of the back. So then solving George's problem is not going to be through treatment of the elbow, it's going to be in uh, treatment directed to the, the PCF, the T4 segment. So to summary, to summarise, uh, the sample we conducted suggests that tennis elbow is a multifactorial condition which highlights the limitations of the pathoanatomical model. 
So to conclude, there was no consistent pattern uh, recognised with the PCFs and they were in multiple areas and they were very individual specific. And this is supported by the current neuroscience principles. This analysis provides good reason to be open to a whole body assessment for, the upper, upper limb, for an upper limb condition. There are limitations of this analysis and further prospective studies would need to be conducted. But having new solutions for this common and resistant condition requires being open, objective and non-judgmental in your clinical approach and understanding the limitations of the patho-anatomical model of care. Thank you very much.